Hey everybody, for this tutorial in ProBuilder 6 and Unity 6 also, uh, I'm going to be going over some more advanced techniques that you can use with ProBuilder. Advanced is with big old air quotes and whatnot. Uh, it's not Blender or anything super fancy, but you can do you can do a bit more than we've done in previous tutorials. So I'll start by creating a quick cube, and again, assuming you've watched the other videos, uh, you definitely want kept uh, you definitely want to catch up on those if I can talk. Um, so you can learn the basics and then again, just having tools and tool settings open. So I can keep this nice and simple. So we've already shown how to dive into the edit mode, start picking and, and editing, manipulating faces, edges, verts, and all that. Oh, come on, laptops run a little slow. Uh, okay. So let's get more advanced. Uh, first thing, I think we'll just talk about something you're pretty used to from Blender. So if you're looking to do any kind of edge loop modeling and fun stuff like that. So the big new thing, or one of the big new things in Pro Builder 6 is there's no longer the big old side toolbar. Instead, you're going to right click just like you would in Blender for any actions. So if you select an edge and you'd like to then select around the sides to get a ring, right click over to ProBuilder select and you'll have edge ring. So these should be shortcutable. Last I checked, there was some sort of bug and they weren't, but um, should be soon. Double check just in case. Uh, anyway, select edge ring. There you go. And something you can do with any of these new actions as well is they now actually have this sort of uh, iterative live preview selector. So if you want to turn this on, it's only going to go uh, piece by piece around. Um, it's just a ring select. So it's not really much point to that one, but it's there. Uh, anyway, let's grab the entire ring and then uh, pretty standard action from there. Maybe let's connect those edges to put a new loop all the way around. And of course that also works on the uh, select edge loop, same thing. So this will go around and do a loop selection. And this pops up. If this is not something you care about, just remember as a standard overlay, you can take that, pull it off to the side, dock it, you can Maybe put it in a toolbar zone if you prefer to have it something like that, and then it'll always open up. That's a terrible example, but let's uh, actually let's say we put, um, yeah, let's put this over there. Tools above it, and maybe tool settings right below that. So now I can pop this open whenever I need it. As soon as I go back to doing other work, you'll notice it just disappears. But if I do something like uh, let's take this edge here, right click one more slightly advanced example. Let's bevel that edge. So you'll see it didn't appear in my view here, but it remembers. Hey, I'm over here. I can be used if I need to, and I can use this to quickly set exactly how I'd like that to look. Uh, and anytime I want, if I realize I really use that a whole bunch, pull it out here. Or lastly, if you just really, really, really never want to see these, just right click, go to hide. Uh, so that means you'll never see it again, except for example, let's go over to this edge and do the same thing, right click, bevel edge, and it'll come back up at that point. Hmm. I actually kind of thought it would show up in here. Uh, not hide itself, or I mean, not reshow. Well, anyway, um, I'll check on that. But hey, I would say this is probably the best option. That's the one I tend to like. So again, kind of like Blender. If I want to, I can interact with this. But in general, I just ignore it. So I'm gonna, again, let's say grab these guys and do another bevel. I'm not seeing it unless I want to, but I think, ah, you know, I'd like that to be a little less. Now I can use it and then keep working. The other thing with these little pop-ups, and this is important, is that they're only there while the action is still valid. So right now I have those two faces still selected. Actually, let's just pull this out so you can see this more easily. I have them selected. I can still do the action as soon as I change selection or do anything that's different, right? Like if I move this or if I were to just change selection, well, it's already gone now. It just automatically confirms itself and then it's done. So you can always control Z to get back and undo it if you want to and redo to get it back. Uh, but it doesn't stick around. Again, just like Blender, we um, you might say we copied them a bit, but they copied us in some things, maybe. Anyway, um, big inspiration. And of course, it'll help when you learn Pro Builder, you can move on to that. I'm going to reset my tool layout to where I had it before because I like it better besides that. Uh, different setup. So, okay, um, that's a good one. You can do some edge loops, rings using the actions there. Uh, and there's a couple other useful selection uh, tricks you can use here. So let's talk about some of those. Actually, one of my favorites is, let's say you wanted to select the top face here. Let's make it even just a little more, oops, complex, something like this. So I just want to grab, let's say, all the faces on this top area. So I could one by one hold shift and select them. Much, much easier though, if I just right click, go over to select, and then we can do grow selection. And that's just gonna grow the selection outward. 
by default, you'll notice it just picked everything that was kind of within the same angle across the top here, right? That's because we have restrict angle turned on. If I turn that off, it becomes just sort of a, an iterative grow. So it's gonna move outward more and more and more. So that means I could just keep hitting the keyboard shortcut and it'll go uh, more. <laughs> uh, let's see, so if I hit Alt G, that's the keyboard shortcut, I can do that. And you see it's uh, just kind of growing outward like a virus around the, uh, or outward from where I have selected. And the same is true actually, let me just uh, do, 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 grab a few levels of that. Um, let it be there. And if I do, there's also shrink selection. That would be Alt Shift G, and that'll just keep going inward. So same thing, uh, but opposite, I guess. So again, I like to do that. Keep on restrict angle. That makes a really quick way to select just a, a face area. And you can also change the max angle on that. So if I start to bring that up, you'll see that the angle, it's kind of uh, driving out a bit more and more. This can also be really useful if you have uh, chunks. That's something we should add separately in general. But uh, let's say I just had, um, I'll just take this whole thing and uh, so I hit Control A, that's maybe a useful one. Uh, then I hit Control D and I'm just gonna copy, ooh, that copied the object. Not what I expected actually, just one more thing. Okay, back into edit mode, let's try this again. I'll grab a few pieces here. I'm just gonna pull them over, not like that. I keep using um, shortcuts from other tools. Okay, actions. We want to uh, duplicate that face. So again, this is the nice part. I should remember my own tool set. Um, again, just like Blender, look for the actions. There it is. We're gonna duplicate the face. It's gonna ask me, hey, do you want to go to a new game object or to a sub mesh? Sub mesh is maybe too technical a word, but anyway, if I choose that one and confirm, it's still part of the same object. So you can see it's here within this cube, but it's now a, a separate chunk over here that's been duplicated. Uh, so there we go. Now, anyway, as I was saying, if you use that Alt G to grow, if you have it, it just like slam it all the way to the max or something, that means it'll always just grab that entire chunk. So it's a quick way to kind of replicate Blender's ability to select what they call chunks, which is a great word all at once. Uh, okay, so we had a couple accidental examples there, mainly the duplicate, duplicate is good. Let me actually show the other version because I think that's useful. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna right click and this time we're gonna duplicate it as a totally new object. So I click on duplicate faces and instead of sub mesh, I wanna choose game object and then hit confirm. So this is again where those options are nice to have right at the time. And so it's not removed from here, it's just copied over to a whole new object. So just a useful way if you have a piece that you'd like to move over to a new piece, use it again, something like that. And we can do the opposite, of course. So if I want to merge these back together into one, I'll hit escape to go back to uh, regular game object editing. So I'm selecting and working on game objects, select both of these, right click and choose Pro Builder Mesh. Um, I should explain the background of this part, maybe perhaps. So also new in Unity 6, again, this right click menu, but it doesn't only work. So I've shown you how it works here in edit mode where it's giving you actions for these fancy you know, faces, edges, vertices, etc. But it also works exactly the same ish. Well, it's giving you actions for whatever you can select. So here in game object mode, I'm seeing, you know, cut, copy, duplicate, etc but it also has a really smart feature, one of my favorite parts, where based on components, it'll give you actions as well. So the transform has a couple basic actions um, and probably mesh, of course, has a bunch of specialized ones. So in this case, we want to merge those two objects. So it's a pro builder action, we'll find it in here. Can't do it yet because we only have one object selected. It's trying to be smart, trying to help you. So I'll select both of these, right click, go down to that and choose merge objects. And now it's just, one single object. If I were to go back into edit mode, now you can see all together is one right there. So that's a pretty good overview of using those across actions. Again, I'm not gonna go through all these because there's a ton of different options and we'll probably go through more in some of the more sort of uh, task specific videos where we're like, let's build a house with an interior and exterior and you'll get to see all those come together or just mess around yourself and I'll have the uh, documentation for them. So not to get too de detailed on those, I think that gives a pretty good overview of 
using the actions. Again, just look through those. But there's one piece I wanted to go over last, which let's let's delete this mess, as always, and create a brand new, nice clean cube here. So last part of this semi-complex editing uh, is the cut tools. This is also new within Pro Builder 6. What this allows is basic to Blender users and such, but pretty nice and new in this case. As you might guess, you can now hover on a particular face and start cutting out your verts. This is really useful, especially if you need to make some sort of organic shape into something. I'll just do that. Click back on the final point and it's going to complete it. And then it will automatically select whatever it is that you've cut out if it's separate. And then I can go ahead and, you know, extrude, go to work on it, etc. Do some uh, whatever I might want to do. Let's take these just for fun, all the edges, all the outside and scale them upward. Look at that. Amazing. Um, okay, so cut tool. Uh, you can also use it if you're working and you see an edge or a vertex, it's going to snap to those. So for example, I want to cut from here over to here, maybe to this edge right there, you'll see highlighted, and then maybe to this point. So it's going to highlight and snap to those just to help you do that. Once you're done, if that's what you want, you can go ahead and click on complete at the bottom. If you hit the escape key, it's just going to cancel out. So again, pretty much like Blender. This is a good point to mention. Using the cut tool can create some pretty odd n-gons. So these are what you might call just sort of a potentially dangerous poly faces or whatnot, right? So this big old one that goes around the outside, this one here. And as you might have seen actually when I was, I'll just do this again, selecting all the edges here and then expanding this. As I, as I push those across and they start to get just a little odd. You can see there's very strange and poor uh, shading and all sorts of weird artifacts going on and such. So you don't want that. And usually the way to kind of stay ahead of it and make it less likely to happen is to cut up any of these engons you have into pretty reasonable quads, five agons, six agons, etc. are pretty good. Um, that's my favorite term versus pentagons and such. Um, so you can do that using the cut tool by clicking on a point and moving over to an edge, assuming it doesn't break for you like it did for me there. Let's try that one more time. You know what it might have been, and this is a good one to catch, if you accidentally hover into a different face while you're doing the cut, it's going to try to use that face. So make sure that face that you want to work on is highlighted. In this case, this one here, I'll hover. Oop, yeah, it almost caught me. OK, we could probably make that. Well, I'm not sure what. Well, anyway, I'll click from there and go over to this edge and then hit enter to keep that. So at this point, what I'll have is a nice quad here. This is getting a little better. I don't have to necessarily cut all those up along here, but it might go through again, just for kind of poly safety and grab like here, go over to that edge. That looks pretty good. And I'll do one more over here. What's looking pretty weird. There's these edges coming really close to each other. So now if I grab that one and go over, oops, to the edge right there, enter to complete and that's pretty good you know this is um you really want to mostly just try and avoid convex shapes sorry concave shapes anything that's got a part going into itself this one's actually really bad over here it's very likely to have some sort of trouble so i'll just do the same thing there and again this is just optional just wanted to note it oops i hit escape instead of enter so i didn't get it but that's okay it's just a demo and i should move on anyway so that's the cut tool, very useful, can create some dangerous things, so be a little more careful with it, of course, um, but it's it's good to have. Uh, okay, so let's see, I think that is a lot of it. In the last video I showcased this, but just in case you missed, there is also the really, really useful ability to have the face, oops, I already have it turned on, have the handles matching the face orientation or the normals. So. Over here you have you know global which is going to set the handles to match the world local which will be matching the object itself no difference here in this case because the object hasn't been rotated but most importantly element and you can see there pretty easily it's uh, it's matching that which allows for some nice things like if i wanted to inset this right along there and then i can also move it up and down or do something that's going to match that face itself and that'll work on edges too so the edge is going to use the faces normals and keep it nice and connected to it there. Okay, so that would be it. Again, make sure you check the other videos. This one might be a little further out if you didn't already watch those, but it's not too much in Pro Builder. It's a pretty basic tool set. 
check the actions menu anytime you're looking for something to do. And if you aren't certain, well, not when you look something to do, um, well, if you're curious what you can do with the selection, and we will have, or I'll have the documentation with uh, info on every one of these, but no need to go from one by one here. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopes, uh, I hope that helps uh, everyone get a little further in Pro Builder and check out the future tutorials. Okay, thanks. Bye bye.